Hello and welcome to a very special episode of The Sligo Show, brought to you in association with IT Sligo. As you know, we are on our summer break, but we got an opportunity to have today's amazing guest with us, so we couldn't turn it down. We're delighted to have her with us. This lady has won multiple national titles, European titles, world titles, and now, as we've all been watching the last couple of weeks, she's now Sligo's newest Olympian. So it's wonderful to have her here today. So a big welcome to Mona McSharry. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks very much for taking time out of your hectic schedule to be with us. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, it's our pleasure, our pleasure. So like, since you've come back from the Olympics, I presume it's like a whirlwind since. It's just madness and cloud nine still. Yeah, definitely still on cloud nine. It's been a little bit busy because I've only had four days at home. I've kind of been running and racing to do everything and yeah. see everyone. I haven't had a second to just relax, but you know, I wouldn't have it any other way anyway. I'm not the type of person to, to chill and hang around. I like to be doing stuff. So, yes, you know, it's yeah. it's been nice. You've been jumping off cliffs and everything. And yeah, why not? You yeah. know, jumping into the sea, got to get my fill of it before I leave. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine. It's not as much over over in over in America where you are, obviously, is it? No, no seas near me, so ah, that's okay. a pity. Well, you have Pete the dog as well, keeping you calm at home as well. Exactly, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's all good. Uh, so, the Olympics itself, I mean, obviously, I'm never going to see the inside of an Olympics, but what was it like? It was obviously your first one, like, you know, the village looked amazing, like, it must have been just wow everywhere you turned, was it? Yeah, it was. It was honestly a little bit overwhelming at the start. There was just so many people, and going from our holding camp where the only people I seen were the swimmers and the coaches, you know, people I know, yeah. to then step out of your your building in the morning and just have a swarm of people in front of you. Kind of like you're stepping out onto like a city street. You know, that's yeah, the way it yeah. was. It was definitely took me a minute to get used to. Yeah. But um no, it was it was a really fun experience and yeah, you know, I'm really lucky that I do get to be one of very few that get mm. to be in an Olympic. Someone said only one percent of all child swimmers yeah. <laughs> that start into competitive swimming get to make it like so a, yeah, a real privilege. Cool. And so you said your swimming team were all together. So were you with the whole Irish team at all or was it all potted off or what way was it kind of um sadly not. There was like a um a headquarters, I guess, where most sports were, like Christopher, um, and that was, we couldn't train there because the pool was 45 minutes to an hour's drive away, so it wouldn't really make sense for us to drive that multiple times a day. So we actually stayed away in our own little hotel um, near the pool, which was which was good for us. And I guess it was relaxing and kind of made it feel like we weren't at the Olympics yeah. because, you know, these are people I've been away at, at competitions with for so long. It was like, oh yeah, just another normal You're competition. making lots of jigsaws, I see. Yes, yeah, I had everyone <laughs> making the jigsaws. So we're trying to help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And quite big ones as well. I remember seeing that. It was yeah, great fun. Yeah. And then you had, you had mum's home cooking as well. I seen that all sent out. Yeah. So is that kind of part of the routine to go, no, this is what I eat. I don't change, obviously, when I go out there. Yeah, I'm, I, the way I am is like, I don't like a lot of processed foods. Um, I don't like protein bars or any of that stuff. But you, I know that you do have to fuel after after you swim. Um, and it's kind of hard to get a full meal in straight afterwards. So, yeah. Before I went to America, me and my mom sat down and we, you know, came up with recipes and stuff like flapjacks and protein balls and all that stuff. And I've right. I've been eating it ever since. So yeah, yeah. Um, lunch boxes just, and lunch boxes. Yeah, and exactly. Like, yeah, so yeah. that's yeah. My mom uh, made all that stuff for me and dropped it up and I packed it and brought it with me and it was it was great. I definitely had more than I needed, but sure, I'm that type of person. I'd rather bring the whole kitchen yes. um, and not need it than be looking for looking it. Looking for it and yeah. then oh, especially coming up to the big events, like you know. Exactly. And when you arrived over there, then like is training like do you still intensely train for a few days or is it kind of like just kind of topping up you know what I mean what's it like um you definitely do a, like some harder sessions but there's less of them and you have more rest in between um so you still do a bit of intense swimming but it's not going to tire you out as much it's yeah. just um I guess reminding your body what fast racing feels like you know yeah. um and then you have more easy swimming and more technical stuff in and around it or just short bursts you won't be doing like long long hard sets yeah yeah okay and like it, with going to the olympics i remember in one of the interviews you said it's like you swim it like it's any other race or did the olympics when you were there go i have to change something a little bit or is it just real regimental how you swim each each race honestly it was it was pretty regimental like i have a very set routine i'm a creature of habit myself mm. and you know i have my two hours before race strategy and it like of course i make alterations when i feel like i need to but like once you get into that zone you know i do the same thing for any competition i race whether it's you know the smallest little thing in the middle of nowhere or the olympics like i'm still going to do the same routine so once i get into that it's just preparing for another race yeah and and were you were you more nervous than like before the heat or the semi-final or the final? Because you actually said you can have fun in the final now in one interview. So what did that journey feel like? Was it was a pressure to go, oh God, I better get over the first hurdle, you know, or did you feel confident anyways? Yeah, I think going into the heats, I was definitely nervous because I knew myself that I could definitely make a semi if mm. I could like perform. There was definitely a little bit of fear there of, you know, what if I don't perform? 
Um, but I was also, I guess, a little bit comfortable in the fact that I was ranked 12th, so I should be able to make yeah. it. And then the semis was definitely the most nerve-wracking for me because a final would have been amazing, but I was ranked ninth. So to okay. put, like, you know, and you never know, like 16 women, like they can all just throw out a best time, like you're at the Olympics. Yeah, so you really yeah. don't know what's going to happen. And then, yeah, once I'd made the the finals, I was just like, I, like I've done way more than I expected I was going to do. And I just wanted to enjoy it. And I think I really did. There was a sense of relief racing the final. Yeah, yeah. you always a smile coming out. Like it just looked like always joyous. And yeah, you were interviews afterwards. You were so like yeah. joyous. It seemed like great fun. And so like before the final, for example, pre-race, uh, like again, for us that'll never see the inside of this, are you all in the same kind of area? Do you all have your own little space? You know, is there a lot of tension? Is there rivalry amongst the swimmers? Are you pally? What kind of a vibe is it? Um, it's, it's definitely quite tense, I feel like. Normally, like we have our own team areas, so you mm. won't see anyone until you go to the call room, which is about 20 minutes before your race. Um, and then there, yeah, you, you see all the other competitors because you'll line up in like your heats or for the final, it's everyone in one lane. And so yeah. you like they are there, but like I have my music in and I try not to look at them, you know, or like, yeah, yeah. you know, give them too much of my attention. Okay. So I'm just focused on my own thing and I still have things I need to do when I'm in the call room. So I'm kind of busy with that process. Right, okay. um, you know, you definitely like I wave to one or two that I know from like Europeans and stuff. So it's a bit of but it's more so. Yeah, like we're here to do a job. Like yeah, we'll talk, talk afterwards. afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. What music do you listen to then in the headphones before? Um, oh, it's a mix. <laughs> like, my last song is always I Could Be The One by Avicii. I don't know, like, I've been yeah. listening to that since I was 14 or 15 years old. So I just always finish with that one. Um, okay. And I, I've kind of ruined the song for anything else <laughs> rather than competing because yeah, when yeah. I it comes on, my body is just like, oh my God, we've got a race. <laughs> so I can <laughs> never listen to it in a normal... Yeah, yeah, well, like, I know that myself with certain <laughs> songs too. Yeah, you know, you just overdo them, but they're for a specific yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it, it changes, but it's just nice to have the music... For me, it calms me down because I don't hear all the bustle mm. of what's going on around me. Yeah. So, yeah. And obviously, you would, unfortunately couldn't have family there or not even a crowd. Like, do you think, do you love having a crowd? Do you think you could have even, do you think it might have helped you a little bit if there would have been a buzz of a crowd or does it, you just zone in normally or what's kind of effect? Um, it honestly depends. Um, I normally don't, like, I think you don't really hear the crowd unless they're going crazy. Unless yeah. it's a really close race, you're not going to zone in on it too much. Um, my coach, Grace, she used to always whistle the last. 25 to 15 meters of my race like really high like you'd always hear it like yeah. and that used to be like her coming home with me I guess like finishing the last yeah, 15 yeah. so like maybe having something like that would have been nice um but in general you know I've been to so many competitions now where my family can't make it I'm kind of mm, it's kind of the normal for yeah, them to yeah, watch yeah. it mm. on um on the screens you know yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it definitely would have been nice maybe to have a bit of a bigger crowd, but we did have other athletes there cheering, so it wasn't silent. No, no, there was a bit of a buzz. And your yeah. parents chilled out on the day of the final by going to the bog, I believe. With, with the, I didn't know that, but I guess they did, so yeah. So this, and there, they there's always work to be done. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, like, going back to more early life, uh, and I heard one somewhere that it was kind of a little accident in a pool at the beginning that kind of got you being like, you better learn to swim. Yeah. You know, so so yeah. what happened there? It's funny, this story is, like, always Growing legs, crops up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it was, not, like, I didn't drown. I didn't nearly drown or okay. anything. I just, we were on holidays in Austria and, like, um, by a lake, and I just fell in and you know couldn't swim and then I think later on that same holiday I fell head first into like a big basin of water and it was just okay. two two occasions where they were like okay maybe it's time she starts learning how Very to swim you know it was probably inevitable anyway because I live beside the sea yeah of um, course yeah yeah but yeah I think after that was probably that summer and then that September we probably got into lessons or historic whatever. holiday in a way yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> what, it, what it has led to <laughs> I, I mean I know when you like I've read about you going moving to Ballyshannon secondary school so you could be near the pool and like you're training was like intense like like what was the typical day like and when you were what age like early teens was it yeah I guess like it was just a lot of it was all early mornings like Monday to Friday and then um a couple of evenings and then trying to fit in gym as well on Tuesdays and Thursdays um yeah it was it was pretty hectic like um yeah. and then I guess it got a bit better when I was done with um school and I could just kind of train like the last year before the Olympics before COVID hit yes, of course yeah um it got a little bit nicer it wasn't like the mornings weren't too early but yeah no in I think my last year of school there was definitely a time where I was getting up and training 
like at 5.30 in the morning before the swim club came in and then right, okay. going back to Grace's house and taking a nap before heading off to school. Sure. So like, it's crazy to think back to the stuff you did. Like, you oh, know, but it's and you're amazing, like, yeah. amazing, uh, like sacrifices <laughs> and at that age to have that discipline is amazing. Yeah, like, yeah, because like now I, I get up at six and I'm like, oh my God, that's so early. <laughs> it's not that <laughs> okay, early. Okay, okay, so it's changing. <laughs> yeah. and, and like, so obviously, what point did it stop being, oh, I'm learning to swim as a hobby to go, oh, I really want to compete? You know, was it, you know, was it something you just got into or did you always want to go competing? Um, I think, like, I did the community games and that was more so fun, you know, because I did that with running and everything. It's just as what you did as a, yeah. a kid, I feel like. And, you know, I did enjoy competing. And then um, I remember being at one Ulster competition, uh, Ulster short course maybe or something. And, you know, I was nowhere near, no one knew who I was. I didn't, and then I, I think I won... I won the fi I just about sneaked into the final and then ended up winning it by like a fingernail. Like it was very wow, close okay. across the board. And I think like that kind of buzz of just touching everyone else out and winning a race yeah. kind of like got the spark going. And then from there, I feel like once you're in it, you just kind of keep, you keep going, oh, well now I'm at Ulster's, I want to be at Irish. And then I want to be at Irish, I want to go international. And then it just keeps rolling. And then, yeah, at one point it's no longer a hobby, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It obviously just, you got the love for it and then it just drove on and on. Yeah. And I seen a, a Sligo footballer, Neil Ewing, he retired this year. And I read a great thing in his interview where he said, like everyone goes on about, oh, the sacrifices they make for an amateur sport. He said, I loved it. He said, you know, I loved all the training, meeting people. I mean, obviously yours is a solo sport, but like, did you, I'm sure there's times you didn't, but in general, you must have loved all that, what you were doing, all the work. Oh, I love it so much. I think it's, it's made me the person I am today. And, you know, I love, I love to travel and I'm very independent and that's all thanks to swimming. And, you know, I, I couldn't even imagine what my life would be like without swimming, all the opportunities I've been given. And sure, yeah, there was one or two nights out when I was younger where out, yeah. I cried and wished I was out with my friends. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, like at the end of the day, I think I've gained a lot more than I missed. And, you know, I, w I almost wish I could go back and tell myself, you know, don't worry about that yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, because you're not going to you're not going to think back and go, oh, I, w I wish I didn't swim and I could have done that. You know, now I'm just thinking like trying to tell everyone else how amazing sport is and, you know, you should stay in it because yeah. I think those are the hardest years when you're, you know, starting secondary school in the first three or four years. Uh, when I was in fifth and sixth class, I cared a little bit less what people thought of me. And like my friends were pretty okay with me being like, nah, I'm not going out tonight, lads. I have to get up at 4.30 tomorrow yeah, morning. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it is what it is. But yeah, no, I definitely don't think I've sacrificed any. I've probably yeah, sacrificed a little, but I see much more benefits than yeah, yeah, it yeah. being a burden. Uh, and, and at 12, you were quoted as saying you want to be an Olympian. And obviously then in your journey, at what point, you know, it must have been, was it like winning a European or something? You're going... I can be a world champion and an Olympian. Was there a point you go, right, I can really do this? Like, can you remember a point where you're going, I, I can actually be like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I think, like, even winning the World Junior medal, I think that kind of, that whole summer, like, European Juniors, World Juniors, and winning medals at both of those, I was kind of like, oh, like, me? Like, yeah, bet yeah. the Americans and, you know, and the Canadians and all these, like, big top dog countries, like, just me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think at that point, I started realizing that I am kind of, like up there, I guess, and it, it is a possibility. And then I tried to carry that into like long course. And of course, like, you know, coming from juniors to senior, you're gonna like jump down again and be, so I'm just trying to like build my way back up. But yeah, no, it is, I think it gave me a new perspective and showed me that like, it really doesn't matter where you're from or who you are, like you, you can get up there. It just, yeah. you know, it takes work. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And you've definitely put in the work, <laughs> that's for sure. And then in 2019, uh, you missed out on some competitions with illness and then, uh, you decided rather than rest, I'll go and enter a TV show to be the fittest family in <laughs> Ireland. Uh, like, what was that experience? It was like, it was amazing to watch that. Yeah, no, that was really good. Um, it's funny because like we entered that back, I think when my brother turned 14 first, which would have been back in like 2016. And every year they come back to us and they'd be like, no, Mona's away at this or Mona's okay. away at that. And we can't do it. And then that year they came back again and we were kind of just sitting there like, oh, well, I'm not going anywhere. So... And we are like, yeah, well, we, we'll do it, we'll do it. And then I remember signing up and my dad was like, what? We're not actually doing it. We're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, it, I think it was just kind of like a fluke. And we were like, sure, why not? Like, let's, we watch it on TV every year. We might as well do it. Like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And no, it was, it was really nice. It was a really good bonding experience for my family. I wish my sister could have been there a bit more. Okay. I think she feels a little bit left out. But 
Um, no, no, it was great. And is Davy Fitz as crazy as he as he comes across on the telly? Is he a bit of a, is he putting it on a bit in the camera uh, sometimes, <laughs> or is he maybe actually? a little bit? But <laughs> I definitely don't love the man. Now he's a bit he shouts a lot for me. Yeah, he's yeah, like, right, I can't do this. <laughs> but no, no, he's he's grand. Like all the coaches are really nice, yeah. um, and that that was nice too. Like they they got. They spent time with us and they chatted to us, even if they weren't our coach personally, which was quite nice. So yeah, it's made friends. So after that then, you moved to uh, Tennessee, University of Tennessee. Yeah, the year uh, later, yeah, yeah. Well, sorry, the following year. Yeah. And like, this is no ordinary university. These guys have produced 39 Olympic gold medals. So what have you found from being there, the way your whole routine and training changes? Have you found a big step up or is, is it more enjoyable? Or? Um, I, there hasn't been a huge, the, the biggest difference is that the, the team around me has grown like swimmers wise, mm. um, which is amazing and, you know, it gives me more opportunities to compete. And I think the best thing about it is, um, I'm, I'm just a regular person. I think, you know, I, I would never want to be training somewhere where I'm put on a pedestal and like, like as in, oh, I'm the best and no one else here is going to ever catch me. And it's not like that in, yeah. in Tennessee. You know, there are girls that are better at stuff than me and I'm trying to catch them and then it's vice versa. And, you know, it's all healthy competition. You know, you beat me one day and I'll try and beat you the next day and we're all good friends afterwards. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just love that because I think sometimes I, sometimes I might shy away from c competition in case I lose friends or whatever, okay. or like, I don't know. And it's just not like that in Tennessee. And I'm really glad that I'm there and I, I can be as competitive as I want to be and not be afraid of hurting anyone's feelings. And yeah, okay. it's, yeah. it's just really nice. Um, and I think, yeah, just having the opportunity to be surrounded by other great female athletes is is really nice. And all all be rising up together probably. I presume, yeah, as you said. like it's a even good environment. even going back in June, um, I was training with other girls that were going to the Olympics, and that was really nice. You know, and I've I've never I didn't train with them over the last year because they're on the pro team, but during the summer I did, and that was really nice too. And then getting to see them at the Olympics, you know, and even though they're on a different team, like we're yeah. all friends, and yeah, that was yeah, nice too. Yeah. Very good. Well, we're going to take a little break and then we're going to have a little uh, video here from our sponsors, IT Sligo, who've been helping us to get this show on the road today. And we'll be back after that. Life is a journey. And the choices you make show the world who you are. From architecture to app design, engineering to entrepreneurship, science to social care whatever path you choose your journey starts here so we're back here with Mona McSharry again so Mona I've kind of I'm intrigued from a sporting point of view the nerdy things about about swimming okay so uh, right now in Tennessee is it still crazy up in the morning? Is it still long training all days? It's, it's still still the same as you've always been at, or is it more intense? It's it's actually not as bad. Well, it hasn't been. Um, it changes from year to year, but my last year was quite nice. Um, like I said, it's not early mornings anymore. You know, like our earliest morning I think was. 5.45 get up, which early is, enough. yeah, it's, it's definitely anything before six is tough, but no, it, it's not as early as probably back home. And that's probably partly because the pool is a lot closer. So I didn't have to calculate in traveling, okay, which I did yeah, back yeah. home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's not that bad. And then, um, you know, sometimes we do, um, from moving over there, we do sometimes swim and then we go straight into gym, which is something I've never done before. And, uh, I didn't like it until I went there, but I've gotten used to it now. And you know, that's, it's not as bad as I, I thought it would be. And you didn't like it because it's just tough to come out of the pool and go straight to the gym, is it? Or, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then, you know, I love the gym. It's, it's probably my favorite part of training, to be honest. Um, I really do. Uh, I think that's partly because of COVID and I did a lot of like circuit sessions and CrossFit and stuff and just fell in love with that. Yeah. But um, I just kind of prefer coming in a little bit fresher and being able to give my all rather than have it as like, not necessarily an afterthought, it's not, but that's that's the way I perceived it first going in there that we do it afterwards. But you know, normally the swim session is not gonna be horrendous beforehand, so we yeah. still have all enough right, energy. Okay. A little bit of energy. Yeah, yeah. And so for, for someone like you, like elite level, how do, like from a coaching point of view, what's the key for improving times? Is it strength and conditioning, stamina building? Does it just naturally come with age or like how, what's the focus there to go? This is what you need to do to get up to that level. 
It's definitely a lot of hard work um, and, you know, being all around good at, you know, having good power and good strength and being explosive um, and working on technical stuff. And then, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's about being confident in what you can do and mentally knowing you can do it because your body can be ready um, physically. And then if your mind is not, then, you know, you're out. So I think it's also a huge part of it is about trusting that you've done the work and trusting that work and then also just enjoying racing because I think I've I fell into a huge slump and it was wasn't necessarily because I wasn't fit or you know strong enough to swim fast it was just mentally I wasn't ready or capable yeah yes well these are things us just watching the telly you know you sometimes you forget yeah. these are just normal people like yeah. you know and they can have these moments like that lady from the American gymnast team you know yes so you yeah, see things exactly. like that it's a high pressure environment I imagine you know it really is and like so I've seen some of the training videos like doing chin-ups with a huge weight tied onto you it's like <laughs> what how do you do this and I will notice one training you have like little sandbags off the blocks is yeah. that like to strengthen the arms to push off or what's the kind of it's, science of that it's going for it's actually going for the feel of I guess uh using your arms because some people when they dive in it's all leg driven and the arms just kind of go straight up into it but you can engage your arms and almost push a little bit off so when we do it like that we're throwing the sandbags back to kind of gain awareness awareness of what our, our are doing? hands are doing okay, yeah okay. and I, I always see the coach before the race i mean obviously they don't just say look at swim as fast as you can like you know is there what would the coach say to you just before you go in i'm um, obviously you know what's going to happen but what's those little bit of words of advice is it tactical is it just confidence it, it really depends on the coach. Coaches okay. uh, talk to swimmers different ways. You know, sometimes it's just, a, you know, like you can do this and like eye contact like, and yeah. you've got this um, and we've discussed all already and they don't need to say it again. And then other coaches like to just go through, you know, key points um, that we've been discussing or working on, you know, like hit, hit the first five strokes to the line and then just race, you know, stuff okay. like that. They're basically giving you la last minute key tips, you know, on, on how you can, you know, on what you should be focusing on in your race, I guess. But at the end of the day, you know the work is done at that point yeah. and you know you just need to go and do it go and do it yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and uh, like just even to take us talk us through a race you know I'm always intrigued watching like so like the start off like are you trying to get in some water smooth are you trying to get as far ahead and in or what's the kind of angle of that like what's 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 the routine Oh gosh! Well, in in the moment, just dive. I just guess. Go. So yeah. it's not like I need to get in clean, or it's no, going to affect. No, no, oh, it's not like it's far automatic. As I can. Yeah, like okay. that'd be stuff that I'd work on previous. Like yeah. when when you hear the starter go, it's just go. Like so, so there's no like big definitive worry no. about specific things. Because you want to react quickly, and I think yeah. if you started thinking about that stuff, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Um, so you'd have to. Yeah, you just dive in, just and go. then it just comes naturally. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, not specific. Thing. I think for me, like. I was concentrating a lot on like my underwater phase and making sure that I'm not going too deep and like the angle of the trajectory yes, is right. Okay. But honestly, when you're in a race environment, it's very hard to to focus on that. Like you can have little key tips for when you're maybe coming off the back 50, trying to like hold strong or make sure that you're not s skimming the water, I guess, okay. um, or slipping. But for the most part, it's it's very hard to to concentrate on stuff in a race. At that point, it ha it has to be oh. second nature. It's yeah, not really yeah, going to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when, you, when you're then actually swimming up the lane, like, is there, are you counting strokes or anything so you reach the wall at the right time or is it just again naturally, you don't be thinking of these things, um, it's just naturally? I, I do count strokes for breaststroke, yeah. um, but more it's more so automatic, I just do it. Um, uh, I wouldn't, like, and then when I'm coming close to the wall, I, I can gauge by, like, looking. Oh, yeah. Like, I know, like, oh, I'm three out or two out. And then, you know, it is, it's about spotting the wall, too. Like, you have to make sure you're hitting it right. So you might have to shorten, you know, two, three strokes out. Okay. You want to, like, be shortening or lengthening to make sure that you're hitting it on a full That's stroke. Right yeah, because I've, I've yeah. been as a, as a, and please Egypt at home, like I've been listening to these little things. I was seeing one of them on about a slipstream. Is that something I've seen? They're saying one of the swimmers went over a little bit towards the side of their lane. Oh, in yeah. A slipstream? Yeah. I've never heard that swim. Yeah. Well, commentator well, you, like, yeah, you swim. If you swim on the side, it's it's usually not great because um, you're kind of like, you're not in the center and you could be in someone's. But then if, you, if you're swimming on the side, sometimes in freestyle, you can get into someone else's wake if you're just the right. Yeah. pace behind them and then that can be speedy but like y you wouldn't be Thinking that was, yeah you wouldn't tactically going no I no get yeah in. i want to be ahead i, I don't think I want so yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. And, and like uh, is there a preferred lane in swimming does it make any difference i think it depends on the person you know the um, personal choice, yeah like for me i i don't mind i love lane four i do but sometimes the the pressure that comes with lane four can be yeah. stressful too so like i like racing in lane eight was honestly lovely in the final because i came out first i had the most time to prepare okay, and i actually quite enjoyed that 
Um, whereas sometimes when you come out in lane four, you're the last person to come out. And although they will give you time, you just feel like you're more rushed because there's no one else coming out after you. So yeah, like yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, for me, I just like to warn if I know what lane I'm going to be racing in and I'll warm up in that lane. So like if I'm racing in lane six, I'll warm up in lane six. And then oh, I'm yeah. just kind of used to, I guess, what you're looking at, because especially at big competitions like this, they have cameras underneath the water. Like for my mm. 200 breaststroke, there was a camera following me under the water. Oh, right, okay. And I was like, this is interesting. For a couple of strokes, I was thinking, gosh, I wonder what they're looking at. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're in the middle of this thing focus. trying to concentrate. Yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen that, I go, what's this doing? Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, so, I mean, as I said, thanks. I was always intrigued with those little things of the race itself. So moving on from now and what's next, you're obviously back to Tennessee tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, sorry, um, when we're filming this, it won't be tomorrow, when it's yeah. broadcast, but it's tomorrow you're heading back. Yeah. Uh, and then is there more competitions up soon or when is the next, you know, big competition? The next big competition is going to be probably World Shore Course in December. So nothing for a while. It's, it's probably about getting, you know, good work under my belt for the next couple of months. I'll definitely have, you know, kind of November, December time we'll be starting racing with, you know, Tennessee, um, and they won't be big competitions. They'll just be like dual meets just to get us prepared for the college season too that starts after Christmas. Um, but yeah, no, I honestly, I still have to sit down and just figure out what my goals are, like okay. specific goals. Like I have obviously rough targets. Like I want to make it to 2024, but you know, we need to fill in the gaps between now and then. I can't just be like 2024, I'm going to the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole um, lot yeah. before that. And then of course, you know, there are loads of competitions that I want to go to and race at like Europeans and Worlds, but I, I need to lock in and, you know, figure out what my targets at those competitions are going to be. Um, and that's just, you know, um, a talk that me and my coach need to have when I get back to Tennessee. And do you get home to Sligo much now in a normal year? Is it like oh, summer holidays or no, it's probably just resumed now, is it? Not really. Like it depends on the year, you know, with the Olympics running quite late. Normally we get August off and then because college starts back kind of the third week of August, um, it doesn't leave a lot of time. Um, and then, you know, next year European long course is actually on at the start of August. So I'll probably be going straight back to Tennessee from there. Okay. So, you know, it, yeah, you just kind of have to find the breaks where you can. Um, and yeah, sadly, home is so far away from Tennessee. It's not just yeah. a quick flight, but um, hopefully my family will be able to come visit me this yeah. year. They can normality see, comes back see where I'm living, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and do you think we'll ever get a 50 metre pool in the northwest? You know, would something like that be beneficial to you or you'd probably be still training? It depends. Um, it probably wouldn't be overly beneficial to me now, but it would be so beneficial to, you know, the next crew Generation. coming up, yeah. you know, and it... You know, whether it's in the Northwest or just, I think, Connacht in general needs a 50 meter pool. Yeah, you know, we yeah. have one down in Limerick, Limerick we yeah. have one in Dublin, we have two in the North. So um, I think, you know, it would be really nice to even see one somewhere near Galway or, or something, you know, yeah. that's just a little bit closer. Um, a bit of a, a fairer chance, as you said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. And the, the bulls are swimming in a 50 metre pool too, if you're training. Like, exactly, because so. you do need, like, you need to have access to that. Like, not not a huge amount of access. I only did, you know, one to two sessions a week in it okay. um, as a, a younger athlete. You know, it's not, water is water. You know, you're still no, doing yeah, the stroke. Yeah. Um, yeah. But just for, like, stroke counts and stuff, when you're trying to lock in on that, and it's definitely going to be important there. But, yeah, it, it would be nice to see a 50 meter pool here. Mm -hmm. We'll see. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Well, that's one of my is shouting out to the government to get us a pool. <laughs> well, look, you're an, an inspiration to all those young athletes. You've like, you multiple national titles, records, it's a world, it's unbelievable. Your chain of uh, achievements is amazing. And I suppose one of the biggest things from watching you, uh, you're, you're an idol, I think, for anyone of your age. The way you comp you're composed, the way you spoke in the interviews was amazingly, amazingly done. So I think you're a real inspiration to not just adults, or not to kids, but adults as well. And you're, yeah, and Sligo's proud of you, Ireland's proud of you, and I think your, your sport is very proud of you. And thanks so much for coming in, taking the time. I know your schedule is absolutely crazy at the moment. So we're very privileged to have you here. And uh, all the best of luck for the future. No and problem. we'll see you soon. Thank you for having me. No at all. Thanks very much. Thank you. So that's it for this special. And with thanks again to Mona, and also thanks to IT Sligo, who helped us put this show together. We'll see you soon when we'll be returning with our normal series in September. Thank you.